All right, so we're doing the parts of the cell, all right? So we start with the outside, we work our way in, all right? And look at the colors, the colors sometimes help. So we're starting with this outer covering. That's the cell membrane. They painted it in an aqua color. And I say that because you notice that that color continues on some of these other organelles, all right? Called the plasma membrane, the cell membrane, all right? It covers and protects, all right? Gives the cell its shape and its main function, it allows things to move in and out of the cell. So what we call transport, transporting nutrients in, allowing things to come out. Okay, that's its main function. So you notice we're doing the name and its function. All right. You go inside, all right? All this clear plastic area, that's the watery part. That's the cytosol. It's water with thousands of different ions, minerals, vitamins, nutrients dissolved in it. Everything that the organelles will need to function properly, to carry on chemical reactions, metabolism, it's there. It came from out here. It came from the fluid outside, the interstitial fluid, it was transported in to the cytosol, and then it's given to the organelles. All the colored pieces represent the organelles. They're all different types of organelles, and they've color-coded them to make it easy for you. Two types of organelles exist. Membrane bound or composed of membrane and non-membranous, meaning not composed of membrane. For example, like I said, you see the color, this aqua color? Notice that it then goes and continues here on this dark blue area. Notice that it continues and goes around the nucleus, then comes off. Some of the organelles, many of them, are actually constructed from the plasma membrane that's on the outside is used to manufacture the organelle. Some are not. Let's do the ones that are not. This will be the first. Two yellow centrioles surrounded in black. Okay. Every cell has two centrioles. The centrioles are not made up of plasma membrane. They're made up of protein. They're made up of a protein called microtubule, microtubule, okay? They are active in cell division. So when we talk about mitosis and cell division, these will become active. They're made of microtubules. They will also be the area where microtubules are synthesized for cell division, okay? And we'll talk about that when we talk about cell division. The black area is really just an area. It's not an actual structure. It's an area, it's called the area around the centrioles. It's the centrosome, centrosome, okay. The other non membranous are all these little white dots. These little white dots are called ribosomes. Again, they're made up of RNA and protein, okay. no membrane. The role of the ribosome is where proteins will be created, right? You start protein synthesis at the ribosome. Notice that the ribosomes in this particular model seem to be connected or surrounding all of the green membrane parts. Those are called fixed ribosomes. Fixed ribosomes are actually attached to membrane. Here you see it attached to the membrane around the nucleus. Here you see it attached to the membrane around what's called the endoplasmic reticulum. Those are fixed. Some are free, meaning they would be free floating within the cytosol. Okay. It's where protein synthesis begins, ribosome. Okay. On this model, those are our non membranous. There is one more non membranous. Uh, it's in the picture, we don't have it on the model, it's called the proteasome. Proteasome is a, think of it as a little tin can, a little container containing enzymes, enzymes that break down proteins. They would be in here floating around, our model doesn't have it. 
Let's go to membranes. Let's start with mitochondria, all the orange things. Mitochondria are derived from plasma membrane. Mitochondria are double membrane, meaning a layer of membrane, like this in white, covered by a second layer, like this in green. Double membrane, all right? Mitochondria, simply stated, it's where ATP is synthesized. And ATP will be used as an energy molecule within the cell. ATP will be used when the cell is building things like proteins, fats, carbohydrates. Mitochondria. All right, let's do another one. All this dark blue area. So as we already inferred, you see white dots around it fixed ribosomes around it. This is what we refer to as rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has ribosomes on it. Notice over here, there are no white dots. And over here, no white dots. This is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So we have rough, we have smooth. Rough is synthesis of protein. So it works along with the ribosome in the construction of the protein. Smooth synthesis of carbohydrate and fat. Carbohydrate and fat smooth, protein rough. So we have lots of endoplasmic reticulum. Let's talk about this pink thing. This is the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. This is constructed in the same exact way as the ER, meaning membrane is folded, membrane is folded, here the membrane is in pink instead of green, pink, to create little chambers, the dark blue is a chamber, the gray is a chamber known as cisterns. Inside that cistern is where the chemical synthesis takes place. So the structure of this and the structure of this, Golgi, ER, is similar. It's folded membrane creating cisterns and inside something's being created. In the Golgi, we see the final stages of protein synthesis, carbohydrate synthesis, fat synthesis, meaning the proteins that were being made here in the rough and the carbohydrates and fats here will make their way to the Golgi, where the Golgi will then finish it off and put it into a tiny package. Once the product is done, it goes into a package. Okay? Here are the little packages. These one, two, three, four, five, six little bubbles, pink bubbles. These packages, we will refer to them as secretory vesicles. A vesicle is a little piece of membrane that contains something that was synthesized in the cell. So these little pink ones coming off the Golgi or near the Golgi, these were created by the Golgi. They contain stuff that was made by the Golgi. I'm calling these secretory vesicles because they will make their way to the membrane and then they will break open and release their contents out of the cell, to secrete, to release from the cell. Another word for that is exocytosis. Exocytosis to release from the cell. So, that being said, we're gonna use this one here and this one here along with these guys. Meaning this is secretory vesicles for us and this and this is gonna be secretory vesicles. I know it's blue, I know it has the same color as the ER, but notice what's happening, right? They're opening up onto the outside of the cell, so they're either releasing something from the cell or possibly taking something in, because cells could also take things in. For our purposes, secretory, secretory, secretory. Um, exocytotic, vesicle would be another possible term if it was releasing. Endocytotic, endo, would be the term if it was taking something in. Endo in, exo out. 
right? What else do we have? We have some more vesicles. We have these purple and gray ones. We have these orange and yellow ones. The purple and gray are gonna be called our peroxisomes. The orange and yellow are gonna be called our lysosomes. The lysosomes are vesicles. The peroxisomes are vesicles, like the secretory. They differ from secretory in that they're not gonna release from the cell. They're always gonna remain in the cell. Secretory made by Golgi release. Lysosome made by Golgi stay. That's the difference. Lysosomes remain, secretory release. Lysosome is a vesicle, a piece of membrane that contains what we call digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes are enzymes that can break things down, digest things, break things down. So what would a lysosome or digestive enzyme need to break down in a cell, because they remain in the cell? Energy. Three things it can do. Number one, see this mitochondria here? Maybe it gets old and worn out. The lysosome will surround it release its digestive enzymes and totally digest it and break it down, recycle it, take all the pieces, and the cell will then use those pieces to make a new mitochondria. So recycling of organelles, number one. Number two, white blood cell. All right, say this is a white blood cell and my hand is a bacteria. White blood cell comes up, finds the bacteria, the membrane will fold in, this will be brought into the cell, endocytosis, or in the case of white blood cells, we call it phagocytosis. These lysosomes will surround it, release the enzymes, and destroy it. That's how white blood cells attack bacteria, viruses, parasites. It's brought in, phagocytosis, and destroyed by the lysosome. That's number two. Number three, this cell for some reason becomes diseased, damaged, cancer cell, dysfunctional cell, diseased cell. It's got neighbors around it that are healthy. Cell realizes it's diseased, tells all of its lysosomes break open, and the entire cell is destroyed, digested. And then this diseased cell is destroyed and removed from the normal, healthy, functioning cells. That's called apoptosis. They call it cell suicide in your, in your book. All right, so that's the third thing that lysosomes can do. Very powerful little vesicles. Let's make peroxisome simple. A peroxisome is a small miniature version of the lysosome. Lysosome's got 50 or more different digestive enzymes. Peroxisome's got a couple. Right? Smaller version of the lysosome. It can digest little toxins or chemicals that might be damaging to the cell. The book emphasizes hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. If H2O2 begins to develop in the cell, this guy can neutralize it. Big, small. Not size, but contains a lot of enzymes, contains a few enzymes. Lysosome peroxisome. Last, the nucleus, All right? The nucleus is usually the largest of the organelles. It is also a double membrane like the mitochondria. You can't see the double membrane of the mitochondria, but you can of the nucleus. See the white, it's called the inner nuclear membrane. See the green outside, that's the outer nuclear membrane. So there's two membranes. Inner nuclear membrane, outer nuclear membrane. If you put the two membranes together, if you talk about them as one unit, it's called the nuclear envelope. Nuclear envelope. So let's practice. I put a label here on the white. I ask you to name the structure. What are you going to say? This white thing is? Inner nuclear membrane. All right, green, outer. Great. All the holes, nuclear pores holes that allow things to go in and out. The clear stuff, that's the water inside the nucleus. 
the water in the cell, cytosol, the water in the nucleus, nucleoplasm, nucleoplasm. If you look inside, you see a little brown marble. It's not a marble. It's called the nucleolus. They make it a color because it's an area inside the nucleus where there's a lot of synthesis going on, meaning we're making RNA and some proteins that might be used for protein synthesis or for the construction of a ribosome. So it's an area within the nucleus where synthesis is going on, the nucleolus. If you look really, really close, you're gonna see blue squiggly lines floating in the nucleoplasm. That represents the genetic material. The nucleus is where genetic material is stored, where the DNA, where the genes are stored. And they will always be in there and they will always remain in there. That's the nucleus. Final little bit. The membrane of a cell, as you can see by the coloration, can be used to be outside membrane, can be membrane of organelles, can be membrane of nucleus, can be membrane of vesicles. Membrane, so watch my stick. This piece of membrane that's right here will be in motion, and a living cell will be in motion. It will then become part of this membrane. It's in motion, it's in constant motion. Then it will become the membrane of this. Then it might become the membrane of this ER. And then this ER might be making something that needs to the Golgi. So see this little piece here? This might actually, this little piece of membrane might break off and carry that thing to the Golgi and now the membrane becomes part of the Golgi. And then that may break off and become a secretory vesicle and the secretory vesicle goes to the edge and what does it do? it becomes part of the plasma membrane again, and there it goes. It, the membrane is fluid, dynamic, in motion. What's here might then be here, might be here, might be here, might become a lysosome. It's in constant motion. They call it the fluid mosaic model. Mosaic because it's made up of a bunch of different chemicals. Fluid because it's constantly moving. And just for clarity, this is the wooden base.